Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break and talk about all the fun things that have been crashing around us and catching on fire because uh, <laughs> welcome to my afternoon. Um, yes. Hey, speaking of my afternoon, I am Finn Stone, that is Jill Bryant, and that is one Pedro Mateus. Hello. And everybody, hi. You joining us live or after the fact, <laughs> what's going on, beautiful people? So have we been up to anything fun? Jill, you went to like a little yeah. uh, tech conference. Yeah. Thing, didn't you? So that was really fun. It was um, the Long Beach Woman in Tech Meetup um, on Monday and had a great time and talked to um, uh, the tech community on how they are using Linux in their projects and spreading the love of Linux and Linux gaming. And of course, LWW. I handed out lots of business cards. Nice. <laughs> so, <laughs> Spammer. So, yes. <laughs> Every time I but hear about a long a beach, I, I want to assume, nay, I want to believe that there's a short beach. Oh, yes. Yeah. We, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we call Long Beach Wrong Beach because uh, it's a south, south-facing south beach, not a west-facing one. Right on, right on. <laughs> Pedro, I have heard your watch has ended. Yes, uh, finally. Well, Amazon didn't ship it because Amazon... <laughs> So I just canceled that, and I went to eBuyers. Like, oh look, it's one whole p cheaper for the thirty seven hundred X. So three hundred and nineteen pounds and ninety eight p. Uh, and it's there. Uh, it came in on Monday. And Monday, yes, Monday. Uh, and it was I. I got home at like five thirty, and by six, it was already in the box. It was already working. I had uh, got the RAM to work properly at 3200 uh, megahertz. I did try uh, 3600, but it wouldn't even post. So it's like, okay, 3200 it is. <laughs> awesome. <Yeah. laughs> I'm glad you got it, man. I know that's... Yeah, uh... I know. I left the box on the shelf. It's right there along with the uh, the box for the uh, 1600 and the 2400G. Oh, 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 you want to play <laughs> Do it. No, you can't see in the show. No. Never mind. Boom. <laughs> Big honking wall. Uh, that's great. Uh, stick around for the feedback section. Uh, Peter is going to talk about some Ryzen related stuff because we've got a question yeah. for that. Mm -hmm. Over here last week, I was like, hey, man, I, I found this kind of busted camera on eBay that I don't play with. It was a personal project. You know, you buy yourself a Tinkertron every now and then. And. By Saturday, I'd managed to hack it together to kind of make it work. That's what we're using right now. It's a Nikon D3400 that can't take pictures. Not, not a very good camera. <laughs> However, <laughs> HDMI works on it, and we're playing with it Friday. And so I just like put it on permanent uh, video mode. Yeah. And it's mm -hmm. like, you know what? I'm going to overheat. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of fun going back and watching the uh, stream Friday when we played Wolfenstein. Because if you pay attention to like the little video thing, it kept on turning red and like had a countdown timer. It's like, nope, nope, not quite hot enough. <laughs> All right. The moral of this story, don't mess with astral photographers, man, because those guys are <laughs> mental. Guys and girls. Because I was like, how do I keep this from overheating? I'm like, oh, there's a community of people who do this because they want to get like long five, six hour exposures of the night skies to get star mm -hmm. swirls. They're pulling off the LCDs, like using Peltier cooling, like phase change cooling and building <laughs> no. boxes to pull wow. humidity out to prevent. <laughs> and it's like, what? That's crazy. That's insane. <laughs> oh, it's like the little Raspberry Pi heat sink. You the, stick that like on there. that with an engineering degree. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when you're dealing with phase, like legitimate, uh, like building boxes, power supplies and all that and worrying about. It's like, wow, that that's crazy. I'm not going to mess around with that. But. I did it the Vin way. <laughs> you put a fan on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. I bought a $10 fan. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it works. <laughs> hey, it gets the job done. The, the, yeah, I, I, I'm not looking for that much of a project. I needed a solution. So for $110, I got a new webcam. Cool. <laughs> awesome. Outside of that, oh, I, I went to the UPS store, ladies and gentlemen. Finally, the, yesterday was like a big... And uh, I was like, I would like to send this C920 webcam to California. And they're like, that'll be $16 bucks. It's like, uh, fine. <laughs> so, in the U.S.? <laughs> oh. UPS, insured, yeah. Yeah, oh, UPS, yeah. <laughs> I did that. So that should be at your house Monday, Joe. Okay. Ish. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, <laughs> so you won't look like a hipster pixel game. Yeah. <laughs> 
The Our next fuzzy. package up was a uh, AT2020 and uh, like a XLR sound card. And I was like, I would like to send this to Cambridgeshire, North Umbrian. <laughs> oh boy okay here here well i know what the break is it's like a little bit 120 dollars oh it's like do you want to check that one more time because she's like no no it's like this is there's not 120 dollars worth of stuff in here it's like okay take two then i go to the united states postal service and say, what can you do for me I'm like best we can do for you is 95 dollars Huh. So, so if we do that, then we do like tariff tax. We're like $175 in on like $90 worth of equipment. So Pedro, that mm-hmm. box is in my living room right now. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, no, that's way too much. <laughs> wow. Oh. I think what we'll do is maybe I'll uh, siphon some company funds to you directly so we can. Yeah, I'll just get them here. Yeah. The, there the you go. Yeah. <laughs> I tried. Anyway, Jolet will at least get her camera. I, I don't get there it, man. Canadian is pretty cheap. I've, I maybe I just picked the wrong person. I don't, I don't know. No. Maybe, maybe I should kick the door in and be like, "What can Brown do for me today?" And just be like, uh. <laughs> or maybe I shouldn't have done that in the past. I don't know. Ladies and gentlemen, mm-hmm. our long national nightmare is finally over. Yay! Oh. So, <laughs> so this is a story. So last August, we talked about Dropbox dropping support for ZFS, XFS, ButterFS, and EcryptFS on Linux. And now they are bringing that functionality back. You know, uh, Dropbox is backpilling because they need, they realize many of their clients live in a containerized world with multiple file systems. And yeah, it turns out that this was bad for people or businesses using encrypted encrypted EXT4 or the widely used XFS file system in their workflow. <laughs> Good on you, Dropbox, but it's a year too late. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, apparently someone forgot that, you know, servers, those things that provide files over the network, they usually use XFS, ZFS, or like Jill already mentioned, encrypted uh, EXT4. It's like, yeah, you didn't think that one through, did you? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I kind of sit back on this one. I was like, wait a minute, you know, if we're going to be 100% honest... This didn't affect your average desktop user. Like, what are you even talking about? The Dropbox thing, it just works. I didn't have an issue with it. And I'm saying that as somebody with XFS drives because we use those for recording. But my main drive, you know, I couldn't, you know, it's EXT4. Uh, everyone I talk to, including uh, Tihan, running his uh, joint in mm-hmm. Jerseyland, he's like, yeah, everybody who is affected by this directly, they're like, next. Yeah, um, there's already bounced plenty of cloud there. services out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, just to reiterate what we said when this was first a thing, it's like, what? 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 That's a silly move, Dropbox. Uh, yeah, kind of it's like, like you're shooting yourselves in the foot, and for what yeah. exactly? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, but hey, if it did affect you and you couldn't find an alternative, back in business, baby. So, yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very uh, good. Everyone panic and then immediately <laughs> stop panicking because... Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, this rolled out last night. Uh, this is from Gizmodo. All those inner show notes, go check it out after the fact. Uh, you might want to install VLC immediately. Update it. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, it was uh, an exploit and completely unexploited. And they said an attacker could uh, basically execute arbitrary code, uh, create like a denial of service state and manipulate your files, uh, steal your pet cat. Maybe I threw in one thing extra. So the patch was in the work and I was like, well, how does this affect me, man? You know, my real player, this is why I use it. Anyway, so Pedro, it looks like the v- <laughs> one of the VLC guys is like, well, I tapped the brakes on that. Well, uh, it was yeah. the actual CEO, uh, Jean-Baptiste Kempf, uh, gave an interview uh, with another uh, media outlet and said, yeah, so the person who reported that never got in touch with us. And the issue that he's found, yes, it was an issue, but it hasn't been uh, exploitable in VLC since version 3.0.2. 
we're currently at version 3.0.7.1. <laughs> so clearly, uh, they are working out of uh, off of really outdated information. And it wasn't even an issue with VLC itself. It was a third-party library. It was a lib uh, EBML. And that mm-hmm. was what that was uh, the library that was introducing that remote code uh, execution exploit. But it's not a thing anymore. It it's not affected. So can't yeah. hear you over my real player. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I've been using MPV a lot more lately because it does one thing, and it's play video. It's like, oh, cool. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, Jill. Homework. Yeah. What are you I- talking about? Oh, yeah. Well, I I think the German security agency should have done their homework, at least, you know, check the latest version of VLC and see if this vulnerability exists. <laughs> so, <laughs> what, Whatever, man. Germany was too busy kicking out Microsoft and Google from their educational system. We'll get to that. <laughs> like right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah. Germany decided Apple... Uh, Microsoft and Google are not good enough uh, cloud services because they have this nasty tendency to leak data. <laughs> they got it's a nasty mostly... habit of storing yeah. it too. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, this is mostly the um, Hesse uh, was mostly the like the investigation that they did was mostly based on. Um, the Office 365 uh, OneDrive uh, cloud storage, but uh, at the end of the article, uh, the uh, person in charge specifically says, no, it, this is an issue not just with Microsoft, but also with Google and Apple. So uh, they are getting rid of all of the uh, big corporation proprietary uh, cloud implementations and looking at new things. What those are remains to be seen, but I'm hoping this will maybe get uh, Munich to come back around. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really great point, Pedro. <laughs> and and <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I found it refreshing that Germany is ba- is banning Office 365 because it can't guarantee what student data is being sent back to Microsoft. Yep. And I really loved, loved uh, one of the quotes in the article is, you can't solve this problem by asking users for consent. The HBDI added, if you can't be certain what data Microsoft collects or how the company will use it, then you can't give informed consent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the student, you know, data is very personal and private <laughs> and <Yep>. under, understand. <laughs> Are our children being data mined? Um, <laughs> yeah. Apparently they were. <laughs> this is just like a real thing. I think Smashly in, um, in our Discord and works in the educational system in Space Australia. And he was like, yeah, mm. no Google, no Microsoft. Yeah. Which makes perfect mm-hmm. sense when you think about it, but mm-hmm. that that's only at school because as soon, as soon as you get to the house, you're like, where's my Google Docs? Because that's the thing. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> because Jill, it, there Jill, is some convenience to is, it. Uh, <laughs> what, we could get, uh, what is it, uh, WordPerfect up and running. I, I saw, oh, yeah. I posted oh, a crap. guide about that last yes. night. Somebody's got like a 2019 guide for getting like the 1997 version of um Corel, word perfect, yeah, up and running. Cor- <laughs> I actually, yeah, I know I'm a nerd. I still use it sometimes. I like, no, I, I love n- Corel. You're Linux. confusing nerd <laughs> with hipster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Tech hipster. Okay, yeah. let's keep the security train rolling. Firefox. Indeed. Oh, and uh, mm-hmm. yeah, this one is uh, from Firefox. And we, uh, if you remember, we talked about a while back that Firefox was implementing a little solution to warn you when you're registering for a new website and you're using credentials which were previously contained in a big data breach. Well, uh, with version 70, Firefox is looking to implement that as well as their... Uh, improved password manager they called uh, Firefox Lockwise and um, they're going to implement both of those and all of the credentials that you have stored in your Firefox password manager uh, they will go through them find to see if there is any of them match any of the uh, the ones that uh, were in the in any of those leaks because websites like have I been pwned or um, the the equivalent one but for passwords uh those uh like they provide 
tons of information and Firefox is very much looking to make sure that every single one of their users, uh, if they're trying to register for a website, that they don't use credentials that were previously compromised, which is a very good thing, in, oh, especially yes. in this day and age with several petabytes of, you know, breached credentials that have been put online. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I thought this this is, again, awesome. Uh, way to go, Mozilla. And they have been implementing a lot of forward-thinking security measures in Firefox. And they have been talking about this, their partnership with the I Have Been Pwned data breach site for quite some time. And I think this is actually a really beautiful implementation of that partnership. Uh, what a forward-thinking uh, way to help the community see if their you know data has been breached. It's awesome. Indeed. Um, they just keep rolling out the hits mm. at Mozilla. It's like, yeah. yeah. Doing a great job. Mm -hmm. can, can we get Jack? Okay. Uh, Jack support <laughs> for WebRTC video and get rid of that uh, stupid little box at the top. Like, oh, the yes. WebRTC. Yeah. Yes. Little box. Seriously, get rid of that. We, we've discussed yeah. that. Make me enter launch codes like six times and do a handstand to make it go <laughs> yes. away, but give me that option with like another plug. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's beautiful. Uh, over on the Reddits, man, Chris Wright, CTO at Red Hat, did an AMA. And mm -hmm. a gang of good questions. Uh, this is a great read to go through all of this. And you know, a couple of nice ones were thrown in his general direction. One of the ones from Bob, 8436, that uh, is like, oh, that's kind of neat, is he's like, hey, man, I'm a former but recent IBMer, and IBM has traditionally had very strict policies regarding contributing to non-IBM open source projects. I understand that Red Hat's culture is quite different. It, it is. Uh, do you see IBM loosening up in this regard, or will the Red Hat division operate differently? Mm. To, uh, you know, uh, an employee rolls in, it's like, it's a great question, but Red Hat will continue to operate the way they do. Respect uh, to allowing Red Hat to contribute uh, to open source projects, man. So I think mm -hmm. that... That's good to hear. That's good news. I think a lot of people are like, ah, nice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, they did say that they were, uh, when IBM bought Red Hat, that they were going to let Red Hat do their thing. And uh, yes. the like the reply immediately after that one is actually from um, Christopher Ferris, which uh, mm -hmm. uh, who is the um, CTO for Open Technologies at IBM. And he specifically said that it's like, yeah, for the first five years, uh, IBM has actually loosened up some of its restrictions around contributing to other open source projects. And mm -hmm. so basically getting Red Hat in there will not, uh, basically it won't give Red Hat's ability to contribute to other projects. And it might actually help IBM get that up and go, uh, up and running as well. So, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, yeah. A lot of people are worried about mm -hmm. Kind of like rightfully so, because if you've been around for a minute, you remember when Oracle nommed um, Sun Microsystems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Oracle and Sun, during that um, acquisition merger, they were like, oh, nothing's going to change, you guys. Uh, wow. So Yeah, we all saw how that turned out. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. There's a little bit, like, maybe justifiable worry about, you know, Red Hat getting Solaris, but... Uh, I, I want to believe um, IBM one. Like you, you don't spend this much yeah. money to start messing with something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you don't communicate as much as, as this if you're, you know, you're you're being open about the procedures. You, you know, do if you want them to believe you, Jill. You misdirection, do. Well, yeah. yes, <laughs> misdirection's well, the well, thing. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's the thing. But they have, IBM has been such a good steward to Red Hat, so it's uh, they're doing <laughs> For, a good like, job. Both weeks. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very true. Yeah. All right. But I think um, it's going to continue. So. <laughs> I uh, that's that's genuinely what I want to believe. Um, yeah. Something we're playing out uh, playing with right now is OBS NDI developed by uh, uh, Tricaster folks, right? Oh, who was that? New yeah. Yeah. New Tech. New Tech. The company who invented the Tricaster, which is the live production audio video effects mixer mm -hmm. that a lot of podcasters using. Um, including <laughs> I, I'm going to lot argue lot that because the base level TriCaster is going to run you about $4,500 yeah. and that's without a thousand dollar control panel. <laughs> well, I meant the big podcasters like Leah Laporte is using it. <laughs> but, I um, thought you said big podcasters. 
Yeah, big <laughs> podcasters. Yeah. <laughs> so, so New Tech also invented the video toaster um, of your and Lightwave 3D animation software, which I used to use many years ago. <laughs> so that's your history lesson on it. What this is allowing you to do is kind of swap out, not even kind of, normally between, we have two, um, two optiplexes down here for uh, Jill, uh, Jordan, or Pedro. And typically the video is split with HDMI out and one of the HDMI feeds from each of these boxes goes into an HDMI encoder on the Threadripper. And that's how we get video. New tech, it's plugin, it's standalone, but you can use it with OBS. It's pretty easy to set up. It's sending that out over our network. Our, our poor little router's like, what did I do to you, man? <laughs> <laughs> I can feel it right now. Because it's just going over a single gigabit link, and that's going to have to get upgraded if this works. But reason uh, latency is about the same. That's what we're testing right now. They're both coming in mm -hmm. over the network. Latency is about the same. The overhead on these optiplexes, because these are like i3 dual core, three gigahertz boxes, not very powerful. They're running OBS and this, so you're only seeing like maybe fifteen percent CPU usage, leaving enough for the WebRTC video, and of course Jack to run with the. Pavu control. Uh, pretty happy with it. Seeing about 15 megabytes of stream at 72060. And it can also send audio, which is neat. Nah, which I awesome. have this other insane, <laughs> crazy idea that I want to do that somebody's going to end up being my test subject. And I pity that fool. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. um, I'll be throwing a um, video up later on about getting this set up. So if you want to do like a remote PC or a streaming PC and you didn't want to mess with HDMI encoders or any black magic stuff, I still want that four channel $500 black magic moon device. Cause I yes. want my life better, but I, <laughs> Oh, $500 man. This is an interesting measure that will also make it a lot easier to bring in additional people on the show keep the cost crazy down because we already have all the audio coming over the network. There's no mm -hmm. wires flying between the boxes, which is great. And it makes it cheaper and more reproducible for people at home to be able to look at this, see the guides and like, Hey, I want to do something like that or something using that setup. You'd be able to do it with spare parts instead of going out and buying like hardware and stuff. And I, that, that makes me happy because I think that's awesome because more people can get out mm -hmm. and, uh, Spread the distortion, the love, and the happiness that is Linux. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's my yeah. All right. Yeah. I, I ran across something on my camera mm -hmm. adventures over the past week. I was like, oh, that's really, oh, my God. Oh, mm -hmm. this, is, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. This is the Axiom Beta. Axiom is a fully customizable open source camera, both in hardware and software, that can adapt to users' needs. You know, it's it's hardware such as sensors, FPGAs, and other components can be swapped out and upgraded. And the Linux OS, of course, can be modified or upgraded with changes to the hardware. I think this is brilliant. Yes, the price may be steep, but, con mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. <laughs> consider not having to buy a new high-end camera every few years for new features and spending a thousand dollars plus each time. Instead, you can upgrade your camera like you do your PC and make it last for many years to come. So, it, you know, I, I think this is really wonderful and open source all the things. <laughs> I want to play with this. I want to play with this. So hard. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, these, these are like if you get one that's kitted, I mean, it, it's handmade completely at this point. They're not mass produced. So you could be looking at like 4,000 plus wet stinky caches. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice piece of kit. Um, they are working with the same folks that make the Magic Lantern custom mm -hmm. firmware for the Canon series, which is an open source firmware that lets your Canon do uh, what it should out of the box. Mm -hmm. Instead of like giving Canon more money for higher end cameras, like it, all the functionality is built in there, which I understand with like supply chain and all that. So they got that going for it. And, you know, the price range, which I would argue this, this is for like, the t a small slice, the tinkerer, who's also the enthusiast, because we do live in a world where you can get like the black magic 4K pocket cinema that shoots 4K, real 4K, not monitor 4K, yes. like 1200 bucks. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, you, you got to balance that. I mean, somebody looking to get into cinema, like low, 
you know, prosumer stuff. That's what they're going to buy. This, uh, this is definitely prosumer hardware. And when you're looking at like low end like production stuff, you immediately come to the overpriced stuff, which is red, which is still cheaper than the real stuff. Uh-huh. Because like <laughs> even the brain box for like a red dragon is going to run you $14,000. And that's just yeah. the CPU effect. You still got to buy the lens, battery mounting and all that. So under that lens, no pun intended, it's kind of a deal. I want to play yeah. with one. Call me. Send me one. It's open source. I'll make it a webcam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. because it's like 4,000 euros, uh, excluding VAT, plus shipping. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it, yeah, <laughs> <sighs> it looks really neat. It looks really awesome. But yeah. Well, this is one of those <laughs> things where, you know, A, I'd ever have to get around to playing the lottery, but if I won the lottery, I'd burn money on. I'm like, yeah, I can afford yes. $4,000 toys, which I'm not saying this is the toy. This is not at all. But for me, this would be, I would order the kit to put it together mm-hmm. and be like, click. Yeah. All right. That was neat. <laughs> Let's go get something else. Um, fantastic job. I just wanted to tell everyone who might not have known about it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That, just was, right that was a great find. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, on the hardware front, we, uh, yoga. Do you do yoga, Pedro? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's way too close to exercise for me. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. I, I realized I'm the, I, me and Jordan are the fit ones. Um, <laughs> yes. I know, right? That's not, that's not, that should not be a truthful sentence. Can, can, can you touch Aww. your toes? Oh, I'm in shape too. I can touch my toes. <laughs> you can touch I've been able to touch my toes for a long time. <laughs> Some people can. Can you put your hands flat on the floor? Yeah. Uh, I, mm, mm. Maybe not anymore. <laughs> I didn't know people. That was the thing. Apparently, it's like I have extreme yeah. difficulty doing this, and it's good for me. It's like touch. It's like okay. Anyway, I'm not judging. Why are we talking about this? I don't know. I'm full time. Yoga. <laughs> one mix. One S. Yoga mini laptop. It's got a Linux mm-hmm. test. Uh, it looks like a solid piece of kit, man. But right up until the, you know, it's 1920 by 1200 pixel touchscreen, 360 degree hinge. That means it can yoga. It can turn into like a tablet. It's a chunky tablet. But uh, at 400 bucks, you're going to get that 1.5 gigahertz Intel Celery, 8 gigahertz of RAM, 128 gig NVMe drive, not mm-hmm. EMMC. So you're going to get the Wi Fi's, Bluetooth, and it's in an aluminum chassis, which. It's like, oh, this is great, which I immediately thought about. How often do you lose your remote? Or how often do you lose, <laughs> misplace my tablet? Because that's about that form factor. And mm-hmm. at 400 bucks, I, I would be moving a lot of furniture on a regular basis. Like, where did it go? <laughs> it is thick, though. No, it's like, uh, it's a thick seven inch tablet, which is uh, pretty good. I mean, you're far less likely to lose it somewhere but yeah it is uh, an aluminum unibody which means it's going to be the heat sink which means it's gonna get hot it's gonna get real hot mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah but i kind of this i this might be <laughs> my like random one thing a year i buy yeah, just just to have that to play with it. I will use it approximately ten minutes and probably never play with it. But they put eighteen oh four dot two LTS the Humbuntu's on it, mm-hmm. and it seems to work well enough. I mean, that's what I'm saying. There's a lot of <laughs> tinker to do with this. He yeah, needs to calibrate definitely. that uh, accelerometer because it's not working properly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> come on! In all fairness, it's working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it is working. It is detecting when the accelerometer changes. It's just the orientation's slightly off. <laughs> um, it's dealing, uh, he tried it with 19.1 with the mints, uh, Fedora 30. Uh, it did the scaling with like 200% scaling or something like that. Mm-hmm. Your results may vary. All I'm seeing is have a blast, have a fun time. Now, mentioned in the original review, which mm-hmm. I, I got a chuckle out of, like, it's, I want to <laughs> give everyone a fair warning. The keyboard is not backlit. Like, yes, and yes. Shrug emoji. <laughs> no, it doesn't have RGB. <laughs> oh, man. Pff, next. <laughs> to be fair, uh, if we're looking at what other devices this could be competing with, like the GPDs, those do mm-hmm. have the backlit option. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> let, let me rephrase that. And. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it said in the article they got rid of it in this version probably because of uh, um, heating issues and to bring the price down. So I don't think it should heat it that much, but 
It's a thing. <laughs> this is something you're going to hold in. You're going to have to thumb type. I would have to thumb type on this thing. I, I, I don't need it lit for my thumbs. You're going to get a feel for it. And it's seven inches. So yeah, you could totally thumb type on it. <laughs> oh yeah. And Katana said, yeah, the battery life on this is not as good as the GPD pocket. So that's yeah. another thing you're, you're paying for the difference in price. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. then I don't know if I, you take to the coffee shop. Like, oh, I'm more hipster than you. <laughs> <laughs> you sit down, you pull it out of your pocket. It's like, well, it's, a, it's my computer. Oh, it's got HDMI out. No, no, that, that, that's, <laughs> that's when you take your 28-inch um, ultrawide and then set it on the coffee. Because <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you've got to be that guy. Speaking, speaking of beautiful people uh, and not hipsters, I'm sure we might have a hipster too. We mm -hmm. do want to take a moment because we got a gang of people to thank yes. for making this show possible yes. <laughs> by becoming a Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash little scheme cast. This is how we pay the bills. This is how we do cool stuff up to and in not including spending $120 on shipping. Uh, mm -hmm. That's something we learned. Uh, you guys have been helping us out on that. Uh, come join in. We got a Discord. You can hop in, say hello. That's where we're at the other six days a week, and we are actually in there. Uh, custom RSS feed for an extra show that we do each and every week that you can join us live at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time, plus early previews of our Uncut series. If you miss the live, we can kind of redo those, put them back up later that day. That's brilliant. And hey, if you feel like, ah, screw it. I'll watch you guys every now and then. Uh, support those who support Linux. Go find somebody because, I mean, <laughs> nobody's making a living off YouTube. Nobody's making a living. We're going to work like a uh, nonprofit, but that's kind of easy to do. Yeah. <laughs> We're a nonprofit and everything but legal status. <laughs> Pretty much. So we got a beautiful gang of people, Jill. Yeah. What do we got this week? Yeah. To think. So Gio yeah, Giovanni has increased his his pledge as well as as scott michaud is now ex executive producer exec he's exec <laughs> exec <laughs> it's a canadian word and aw, uh, and nathan is a new patreon and mostly linux is with us again on libra pay and uh, david is new on libra pay and linux Ganu ganiru <laughs> it's a cube case, Ben said. <laughs> That's why we have mute buttons. Um, <laughs> no, he did the, uh, yeah, Linux Junior kicked us some uh, for the junk box to put it in something that's not a billion year old steel case. That's awesome. Yep. We do document everything, Pedro. We got like, yes, hey, we do. <laughs> wouldn't it be neat to know every single thing in this world? It's like, that's a stupid idea. Why would you do it? Well, we did it anyway. Um, if you're worried about, not worried about, but looking for the cameras, the audio, the hardware, the lighting, storage, electricity, networking, everything we do here. If you want to roll your own, if you're that crazy, I, I, I put it up. It's available, man. Um, cables, storage, cables. Uh, even if you want to figure out like a fancy gaming mouse that works with your Linux, it's all there. <laughs> or oh man i don't want to spoil it stick around for the uh feedback that, that's coming up and we do have if you're curious like what are you going to do in the future this is what we're going to do in the future if you want to know about with that you end up on frank's wall not my rules he insists on it uh cards and coders don't worry that case doesn't exist i just didn't get around to doing it and uh <laughs> networking stuff because that's going to be my future it looks like sfps in my life whether or not i want it because i've been fighting mm -hmm. it's like i don't want to deal with that stuff again it <laughs> <laughs> flashbacks man i'm like no never again i'm done with you anyway uh we're done shilling thank you all again yes 100 <laughs> percent. okay let's get to it with a little bit Hi. Of pie. <laughs> <laughs> yes and this one is a it, it's a strange pie so uh oracle linux on btrfs for the raspberry pi and yes it is very much what it sounds like it's oracle linux 7 has been released for a Raspberry Pi 3. Uh, it's compatible with the base uh, 3B model and with the 3B+. Plus. Uh, the The article goes on to, like, you know, explain exactly why this is a big deal. Uh, but, yeah, it's basically... It's... It, it's Oracle Enterprise Linux 7 working on the Raspberry Pi with BTRFS. Uh, mm -hmm. And that was the point that's like, you know, Oracle issues with Linux aside, uh, 
the BTRFS thing reminded me is um, we need Strider to uh, give this a try <laughs> <laughs> because he is the one person I know that managed to break not once but twice uh, his file system while he was using BTRFS. So Strider. Yes. <laughs> so is, is, yeah. is this what you use if you bork like you know um, your SCO install? Mm-hmm. I may. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't need to go that far. Well, uh, well, come on. Hey, Santa Cruz operation, whatever's left of you, the lawyers, g- give me some of the raspberry pie. That'd be fun. That'd be evil. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, you know, included in the preview is the Unbreakable Enterprise Kernel Release 5, based on the upstream 4.14 kernel. And, you know, this is a great, great way for everyone to learn uh, ButterFS <laughs> without messing up their, their, their normal use systems. <laughs> like Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how he did it, but he did it. Yeah. <laughs> at the end of the day, the average person doesn't need anything more than EXT4. Or RiserFS if you're feeling a little stabby. Mm. Um, yeah. <laughs> very stabby, but... Yeah, <laughs> and body Heidi, but that's for a different time. <laughs> I, we could go for hours on that one. Don't, look, yeah. up, oh, yeah. look, up, look up that fascinating drama. Um, no, good on that. I mean, I guess good on whoever at Oracle's like, this is a good idea and finding, actually getting this out to public. Yeah. That's yeah, the- and this, yeah, this is their first implementation for the mm-hmm. ARM architecture. So it's a big deal, actually. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm sure in future they'll find they'll have a per core license. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> if you want to use all four cores on the Pi, um, <laughs> Pi Oracle never change, baby. Um, okay, if you get anything on the Pi and you want to tell us about it, how do you do it? Mm hmm. Well, uh, there are several ways you can do it. You can write your message, fold it into a paper plane, and throw it at our heads. But the best way that we're sure to get it is to go to livesgamecast.com, hit the contact button, make sure LWDW is the show that you're submitting your feedback to, and fill out the rest of the form. It's pretty self-explanatory. You don't even need to worry about uh, CAPTCHA unless there are some weird cookies in your history, uh, at which point Google may go, hold on, do this. Life pro tip. If you encounter weird cookies, eat them because probably there's somebody else's weird cookies. Just, yeah. just brace, brace yourself for the ride. There are always somebody else's cookies on the internet. Mm. <laughs> okay, so the uh, first one we have Taff, and he's talking mm-hmm. about, uh, well, case sensitiveness. And mm-hmm. DXT for case insensitive, or really case folding, file lookup, which we talked about last week may have a uh, huge import on modding games running through Wine slash Proton. Hopefully, it'll make it into other file systems, too. And uh, that got me thinking. It's like, yes, because on my experience, like, you know, Fallout 4, Skyrim, mostly the, the Bethesda games, I always mm. run uh, the files that I get for mods through a little script I have, which basically goes through all the subfolders, and renames everything with lowercase. Well, that way, I know that there's mm, no yeah. way that there will be mm-hmm. any duplicate files or any weirdness going on. So, yeah, that would actually possibly be a thing. No, it's a horrible <laughs> idea. <laughs> <laughs> a yeah. case insensitive file system would destroy half of my naming schemes. Yeah, that's that's my problem. <laughs> Isn't that yeah. right? File A, capital A, capital A, capital A, little a. He's like, oh, that's not yeah. too bad. And I'm like, no, that, that's just the first one. It goes on from there, from <laughs> versioning systems. I know it's a horrible idea. But... <laughs> well, that was one of the many ways that Linux is, was superior to DOS. <laughs> because of, well, one of, one of the many. <laughs> well, you, this is one of the reasons DOS was dumber than Unix. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It's based off of Unix. <laughs> so, all right. Re- re- real talk, Pedro. We've been saving the uh, this one yeah. for last. It's about you and your okay. unending lust for power. No, I'll go I ahead and wanted... take this one. For you go Pedro. ahead, Jill. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Pedro, I recently upgraded to it to an 3600x and can't get temperature monitoring to work on my B450 motherboard. Sensors detect. Note. 
There is no driver for for ITE I, IT eight six eight six E Super IO sensors yet. Help! 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 <laughs> yeah, Timothy. So, <laughs> you're Thank not you, alone Timothy. there. <laughs> uh, you're very much n- not alone. We're uh, definitely on the same boat because I used to use the IT eighty seven kernel module, which was mm-hmm. a thing, and it was awesome because it actually gave you proper temperature readouts on all of the things on your motherboard. But that's not supported by the current kernels mm. uh the um with the 1600 just before i put the 3700x in i could at least get the k10 temperature that one was that and the uh, cpu fan it were the only two readouts i ever got now with the 3700x i get nothing mm. Just nothing. <laughs> nothing works. <laughs> you know, just people that really oh, pay no. attention to uh, well, thermals. The sensors, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the the sensors don't work, but yeah, thermals, yeah, they're kind of important, especially when you're dealing with brand new processor on a reasonably, you know, antiquated motherboard, because uh, it's a B three fifty on uh, in my case. So it's like I'm always worried about the VRMs, and I do have two fans mm. on the top of the case blowing air up, so I can just scooch my hand down here below the desk and feel <laughs> just how warm it is and yes. well today uh the air that's coming out of the um the case is just as warm as the case itself because it's stupidly hot mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because it's 32 celsius outside and it's already like 9 p.m so yeah <laughs> yeah it's it's a hot day. Yep, <laughs> it's yeah, a it's hot kind of day here in SoCal too. Get away, uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I, you can just rock and roll with it. I mean, unless you have a malfunctioning chip, just let it hang out and do yeah, its and thing. It's the, like the BIOS sees it, and uh, the idle temperature in the BIOS was more yeah. than okay. It was mm-hmm. basically room temperature at that point. So it's like okay. All right, cool. Yeah. When I first got the um, original, like seventeen hundred, man, it, it was a few months. Ten before. Celsius offset. <laughs> oh, this was after we could read the temps, but yeah, yeah, either that or just random moon numbers that would throw up. But eventually, it'll get better. I think the biggest issue here is like the uh, LM sensors. Whoever's working with that, it's kind of disinterested. They're like, ah, I don't really care about that. I don't have one, so whatever. Yeah, <laughs> we, we can go back to what we used to do. You get a little thermal diode, stick it in there. Put yeah, in yeah. <laughs> Accuracy. <laughs> you know, yeah. nowadays with the Raspberry Pis and the cheapo LCD uh, displays, maybe get a teeny tiny one at the top of the case. It's like that's how hot it is. They're done. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea too. <laughs> if it I have one off, of those, and... it's too hot. <laughs> yeah, <Yep>. <laughs> <laughs> there's your scientist. Yeah. Gun. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we were kind of joking around at the beginning. I was like, well, if I had to do something, I would just set my fan curves at like known temperatures. Like, oh, when I hear this. But I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think that's good. Yeah. Do it, everyone. <laughs> we're going to bounce out of here. We, we survived. Yeah, we did. It's going to be Yay. a show. So let, maybe. Can we do some credits? Can I get it on time? And click. We did it. There we go. Yay. If his box freezes during credits, too bad. Oh, thank you, Ben. Thank you, Pedro. <laughs> thank you, Jill. <laughs> thank you for releasing uh, uh, open source SDK new tech. Yes, mm-hmm. that was really, really awesome of them. <laughs> and yeah, I'm pretty uh, sure uh, there's more of me. Um, on this chair than sitting on the chair. Because I've been sweating this whole time. <laughs> I was Aww. wondering if you were going to tie that in with some sense or just like... <laughs> it's like I'm literally all over this chair. At least my DNA is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Aww. We love you, chat room. <laughs> Bye.